Hello, and um, welcome to an overview of regulatory systems in India, UK, and um, the US. So why do we need regulatory systems? Well, a proper regulatory system ensures the quality, safety, efficacy, and standards of medications or any medicinal substances that are intended for sale, manufacture, or distribution. The effect of regulation of medications includes a variety of functions. So regulations include safety, that the medications are safe to be administered to human participants or human patients, efficacy, that they do work, and post-efficacy, we are interested in effectiveness. So whether can they work or not, but also whether do they work in the real world for purposes of licensing. And then other important tests like monitoring adverse drug reactions, improving risk benefit profiles. So these are some of the reasons why we need regulations. Um, again, without regulations, we can't ensure that the quality, safety and efficacy of the medications is um, as high as we would like it to be. In some countries, functions related to drug regulation are handled by a single agency. In other countries, they're handled by multiple agencies. So regardless of the country of choice or country of interest, um, every country has a regulatory body that looks at the quality, safety, effectiveness, efficacy, um, risk-benefit ratios of the medications that are out in the public domain. Globally, we have the World Health Organization and the International Council of Harmonization for Good Clinical Practices that are involved in some of the regulatory functions. Nationally, so in countries, there are agencies like the US Food and Drug Administration, the FDA in India, you have the CDISCO. So there are several national agencies that are involved in regulatory functions. And then there are regional bodies. This one actually does overlap over here. So there are lots of regional bodies that are involved, such as the ASEAN, CEC, which is Central European Commission. So every regional agency within defined by continents or certain regions is involved in regulatory aspects of medications. In India, the principal body that's involved with regulations is the Central Drug Standards and Control Organization, also known as CDSCO. At the state level, the CDSCO has state level authorities that are involved with regulatory functions for the state themselves. And the CDSCO involves biologicals, so they're involved with biologicals, vaccines, pharmaceuticals, etc. Okay, the government of India has a very well-defined structure when it comes to regulations. So there's four particular ministries that are involved with um, health regulations. Specifically, there's Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, which um, has the Directorate of General Health Services fall right under it. The CDSCO um, falls right under DGHS, and the DCGI, or the Drug Controller General of India, falls under the CDSCO. So this office falls under the CDSCO's office. The Drug Controller General of India is responsible, or their office is responsible for quality control, enforcement, any sort of registrations of new pharmaceuticals, um, pharmacovigilance, and any trainings that may be involved with any of these areas. Ministry of Chemicals and Pharma Fertilizers has a department of pharmaceuticals that looks at the National Pharmaceutical Pricing Authority. So mostly from a price point, price index purpose. Ministry of Commerce has a patent office that does registration and patenting of new drugs. Ministry of Science and Technology has the Institute um, Council, the Indian Council of Medical Research, which then has the DBT institutes under them that have the CSIR labs. So it is a very well laid out structure and information flow is strictly um, vertical. There is some horizontal flow of information across these ministries that may result in um, some regulations that are being enforced. 